It's Trackstar GG's, back with another video in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Today, we're talking about the combo of Greyborn and Berserker, and how overpowered it is for survivability in the Chaos Chambers at Chaos Level 20. The Greyborn Berserker class at Outlook does not seem like it'd be very viable, but surprisingly, the stats of Berserkers stack very well with Greyborn's HP. More on that later. For now, let's look at the way I built the Greyborn tree, starting from Reaper of Bones. I personally always go with Reaper of Bones because the ability can last for over three minutes if you use the right build. And this build is the right build for that. First, we're gonna be investing five points in the Mortal Vessel. Then we'll be besting three points in the Faithful Thralls. We'll move down the tree and go to Harvest for two, We'll put five out of five for dark pack and we'll go two for three for saying sacrament and then we'll progress down the tree i don't invest in essence drain or stain of the soul because they both have to do with spells and the cooldown rate on spells i use tends to be under five seconds if you wanted to focus primarily on dark magic damage from spells you could get rid of the points in harvest and the points in dark hydra but i prefer those points simply because they become passive. Moving down the tree, we'll go with Dread Covenant for one, Ascension for three, Lord of Edges for one, and that'll get us down to the bottom of the tree for Morheim's Blessing. Morheim's Blessing is a necessity because casting the spell automatically activates all of the Fate Maker's kill skills. And Dark Hydra is a kill skill, Harvest is a kill skill, and Ascension is a kill skill. With Morhai's Blessing, they will all now proc anytime you cast a spell. Now, moving on to the Berserker tree. The Berserker is normally advertised to utilize frost damage, but I don't actually invest in any of the frost damage points in the tree. Instead, I'm more interested in the second paragraph of Rage of the Ancients, the class feat for Berserker. On action skill start, in this case, Reaper of Bones, the Fate Maker becomes enraged. Enraged duration will not deplete while an action skill is active and ends if the Fate Maker enters Save Your Soul. With that being said, if we go take a look at Reaper of Bones, we will recognize that when the Fate Maker would die, he instead becomes invulnerable for a short duration and restores a portion of his health. This allows for me to be enraged for over two minutes in most scenarios. Now to move down the Berserker Tree and show you why that's so important. And just to reiterate, I'm not focused on frost damage at all. I understand that it's the most powerful element in the game, but I don't want to focus on that. So I spec the Berserker tree accordingly. First, I invest two points in the Savagery because I'm not interested in melee damage or the enraged duration because when I proc my action skill, Reaper of Bones, it's gonna automatically make my enrage last the entire time I use Reaper of Bones. Next, going to be investing in unyielding for three points and then i'm going to be investing in instinct for reload speed and weapon swap speed you could choose to invest in the old ways for a full five points and just put one in the reload speed but i prefer companion damage so therefore reload speed doubling while i'm enraged helps quite a lot the residual health i gain from having all of my companions out has allowed me to mitigate most damage by regaining health at such a rapid rate from lifesteal that there's nothing they can do to kill me. There's gonna be evidence of that at the end of this video. Moving on. Next, we'll be going with Unarmored Defense, which is gonna take 50% of your shield and turn that into 150% of your health. Graveborn is all about health and lifesteal, so this is very effective. Next, we're gonna be moving on to Blood Frenzy, which is a kill skill. We're gonna max this out because it's gonna replace the enrage timer and add time for how much health is restored. The enrage timer part doesn't matter for us because we're using Reaper of Bones, but what does matter is the maximum health being restored at 9% for every kill. It is also a kill skill, which means when I proc a spell, this will trigger, providing massive survivability. Next, we'll be investing one point in the Relentless Rage because it saves you when you're in Savior's Soul. 
any damage you do restores your health meter on Save Your Soul. This changes Save Your Soul from a downing and praying that you get a kill to quite comfortably laying on the floor, not begging your teammates for a revive if you can't get a kill because there aren't enemies spawned around you in the chaos chambers. Last but not least, we'll be investing two points in the Ancient Fury for the maximum health boost and the area damage. Moving on to weapons, rings, shields, amulets, armor, and spells. If you were unaware, melee slots, shield slots, and spell slots have passive enchantments that work regardless. Because my build is focused on Reaper of Bones, I prefer the enchants that say while action skill is active. Right now, two of my passive enchants are action skill is active enchants. One of these enchants increases dark magic damage by 50% while the action skill is active. My second enchant increases companion damage by 50% while an action skill is active. And my last enchant that's passive is on spell cast and it increases gun damage by 30% for 10 seconds. This spell cooldown is longer than the average spell I utilize, but the damage is 4,682, so I felt as if I couldn't pass up on it, and it's volatile. I prefer the Inspiring Trick Mirror Shield because it has a 75% chance to reflect bullets and arrows at attackers and nearby enemies while the ward is not depleted. It also gives 25% extra ward. There currently isn't a melee weapon that does over 1500 damage, so I use the spell blade in coordination with my spell that does 4682 damage for 80%, giving my melee weapon a total damage number higher than 3k. Next, I use Berserker's Plate of the Stalwart Lance because earlier, I showed you that I only invested three points into the old ways, but with this class mod, I get six points in there. So I've got all of the benefits of the three for threes on the right, along with an extra point in the old ways on top of the five. Giving me 36% damage when very close to the enemy and a damage reduction of 34% when very close to the enemy. I prefer rings with melee damage, critical hit damage, and companion damage. Therefore, I've got this ring, which also increases the effects by 25% when in a dungeon, and rings that increase effects by 100% when the ward is not full. Now this build is primarily a companion build, and that's how I get most of my life still. Therefore, most of my weapons have the enchant. After reloading, gain 50% companion critical hit chance, and companions regenerate 8% of their maximum health per second. Weapon enchants are singular, therefore, I try my best to make them useful in most situations regardless of what gun I have. Now to show you what's possible with this build. On Tiny Tina, solo in a four player chaos chamber at chaos level 20. You will see my health floating anywhere between 500 to zero for the majority of the fight. And I just do not die. That'll be all for this video. Enjoy the gameplay footage of the class. Thanks for checking in. Trackstar GG's checking out. Do not subscribe.